Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I did. <laughs> Speaking of the heat and what we're talking about here today, this is, week is going to be the hottest of the year so far, which means it's only going to get hotter. Summer in the south is a beast, of course, and if you add humidity to the heat, you've got the recipe for heat exhaustion or even heat stroke. Oh, humidity, not my favorite word. No. Dr. Brandon Bentley is with the Department of Family and Community Medicine with Wellstar MCG Health, and he's joining us this morning to discuss how we all can survive the southeast summer because... It's a tough one. Yes, it hey, is. Dr. Bentley. Good morning. It's getting hot. <laughs> Good to see you. It is. It is getting hot, and we're still in spring, and so that only goes to show it's only going to go up from here. How can our viewers at home prepare for the summer heat? Yeah, so the best way to prepare for the heat is to recognize when it's about to, to really start turning up the temperatures. So we see our forecast coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, we're getting days in the 90s, and we can prepare now to anticipate those high temperatures. Wear loose fitting clothing, light colors, uh, anything that can allow you to breathe a little bit better so you don't want to have heavy, heavy clothing uh, that's just going to keep you warm. If you have the opportunity to be in air conditioned settings, please take advantage of that. Uh, if your home does not have air conditioning, see if there's any way that you can go out in the community to air conditioned places like public libraries or even big department stores where you can walk around anytime that you can be out of the sun during the peak hours of the day is going to be best for you. And we always announce that there are different like cooling areas, cooling centers across the CSRA during the hot summer months as well. Uh, let's talk about some factors that can increase your risk of heat illness. Yeah, so there are some uh, medical factors that can increase your risk, things like uh, heart failure, certain medications that make you more susceptible for heat illnesses, uh, obesity, uh, being sick and having a fever. So that is going to already start you at a baseline of being a little bit warmer. Uh, so those are some factors. Um, and then just high, high sun exposure is gonna be a, a risk factor. So getting in the shade when you can. Uh, those are a handful of things that we can control at least to help with this southeastern and Georgian heat. That's right. And speaking of the heat, though, we like to be outside in it. That's true. We want to go to the pool. We want to go to the beach. Um, let's talk about SPF and what's the correct use of sunscreen. Yes, yeah, so this is probably one of the bigger questions that I get uh, as we go into May and June. People are going out on vacation because there's so much out there. Right. SPF 30, 50, 100. This one has this on a bottle and says that I should be having this right now. Uh, the big thing that you should be looking for is broad spectrum UV protection. So it's going to cover you for UVA and UVB. Uh, there's a handful of guidelines out there. Uh, what I would recommend from the American, or I'm sorry, the Academy of Dermatology uh, is an SPF of 30 or greater. And so SPF is your sun protection factor. Uh, it takes a look at a handful of situations for how well that your skin is going to be protected from those UV rays, uh, making sure that you're getting that broad spectrum, uh, like I mentioned. There's always a question about this, and they, people ask the, like the numbers, SPF 30, SPF 50. Do, do the numbers correlate with how long you have for the lotion? Is that just the length of time that you have? Or? Uh, uh, yes and no. So it's, it's a little bit of a multifactorial answer, uh, but broken down, it is a, a matter of time past what you would have for sun protection without any uh, sunscreen whatsoever. So 15 would be roughly 15 times what you would get without sunscreen at all. Uh, but there are factors that go into that uh, sweating, uh, if you're going to be jumping into a pool or right. a lake. Uh, so you want to reapply your sunscreen every two hours or after you're going to be getting wet in some way, shape, or form uh, because it will wash off. It's not waterproof. Even the <laughs> most water resistant, you still have to reapply it throughout the day. You Nothing is one and done. It. Nothing is one and done. Nope. No. Okay, no. so always reapply. And it's a good reminder, too, because people are going to be out this summer. Sometimes there's cloudy days. Mm -hmm. We should still be putting on sunscreen, right, even if we don't see the sun ourselves. Yeah, and sunscreen is part of that battle, but also wide brim hats. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they make sun shirts that are longer, that have that uh, SPF protection. If you can avoid being in the sun and, and making yourself exposed, then that's even better than the sunscreen out that that you can buy at a store. Uh, so take advantage of those opportunities and use the sunscreen on the areas of your skin that are still going to be exposed. Okay, good tips. Oh, and uh, what are some signs and symptoms that people should be on the lookout for? Yeah, so when illness? we look at heat illness and heat stroke, uh, you know, this impacts a lot of folks who are going to be working outdoors, uh, and unfortunately even children who are playing summer sports, think things like football is going to be coming up here pretty soon. Uh, so you want to look out for confusion, uh, heavy sweating, although that can be paradoxical because some people can get really dry. Um, heavy sweating, confusion, nausea, vomiting, 
Uh, some of the lighter areas when you're looking at heat exhaustion would be heat cramps, having severe muscle cramps. Uh, that's a sign that things are going in that heat stroke direction. Get out of the sun, drink lots of water, uh, and the big key is prehydrate. So make sure you're drinking water, not right. just when you feel thirsty, but if you're going to be spending a lot of time outdoors or a lot of strenuous activity, drink plenty of water beforehand too. Use your common sense. It's the best you. way to do it this way. <laughs> Thank Dr. you so Bentley, much, Dr. Ridley. Mm -hmm. Happy to be here. Be safe out there. Still ahead.